AGM batteries are about 60% to 70% heavier in weight. That's true. So to get the same amount of amp hours, usable amp hours out of AGMs is going to require at least double the battery bank of a typical lithium system, which yes, is going to mean it weighs more um, and it takes up a tremendous amount of real estate. Large AGM systems in the years or currently would be like 900 amp hours would be a very large AGM battery system that can weigh 600 pounds. And you only get to use 50% of an AGM or lead acid battery or a flooded battery it's called. And under high draw loads for a long period of time, you get what's called voltage drop. So lead acid batteries, AGMs inherently have voltage drop. That's okay for that short term situation like the microwave, but again, air conditioners, long term, you'll, you'll end up damaging the batteries and you actually lose amp hours over time. Yes, I mean, the way I, in, in just kind of a quick term, AGMs are about double the cost of a traditional quality flooded battery. And then lithiums are at least about double the cost of a traditional AGM battery. But remember, AGMs, you can only use 50% of your total amp hour capacity. Lithium batteries, you can use 80% of your total capacity. So while the cost is more, um, that's one factor, but for some people, they look at the longevity. So a high quality solar system paired with an AGM system with, um, with the appropriate battery monitors. I have customers that you can get five to seven years out of AGMs if they're not overly discharged and they're charged properly with a high quality lithium system with the appropriate battery management system, you can get up to 10 years off of a lithium system. But in my, in my personal opinion, um, most people don't keep their RVs for 10 years. So at most, so usually it comes down to lifestyle choice, what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to run so that, that's the bigger factor over just the pure weight or cost. Again, like I said earlier, it really comes down to what, how you're going to use the RV and what you're trying to use item-wise in the RV without using a generator. In the towable market, so the class, the Airstreams, the fifth wheels, a lot of the newer RVs come with residential refrigerators. Well, all of those are gonna require more usage in a given time. So a lithium system is really the only way to go. People's needs have changed as uh, RVs get more electronic. And I mean that in the sense of I see a lot of RVs today that have uh, touch pads. So they have these digital touch pads to run the fans, the air conditioner, the lights, a dimmer system. Those RVs consume more amp hours in a given day than an RV with traditional switches. So RVs are naturally are consuming more amp hours before the customer does anything with the RV. Turn on a light run the furnace, whatever it may be. They just consume more amp hours naturally. That's the base load, I call it, the parasitic draw. And then you throw on the refrigerator, which requires um, the, an inverter to be on 24 hours a day. So you consume more amp hours in a given day than you did five years ago. And then you throw in customers' needs, their iPhones, the TVs, the satellite dishes, all of the other conveniences. So, um, so yeah, 
in a roundabout way, lithium batteries are wonderful. Do they cost more? Yeah, they cost more. There's more labor to install lithium batteries. There's a battery management system that gets incorporated into it. So overall, the job is more expensive, but overall it opens up a tremendous amount of opportunities on how you can use your RV if you don't wanna run a generator, you don't wanna haul around a generator like a Honda, um, et cetera.